Hi guys, people from YouTube, all my followers, another video. Um, this time we are working on a Vauxhall uh, Astra 2005 uh, with the 1.7 liters uh, CDTI. The actual engine code is the Z17DTL. Um, I will try to make this video not a case study, but sort of. Um, I got the car fixed already, but I just put everything back so I can actually make this video. Um, so the car came to me from another garage. Uh, they have replaced the turbo solenoid and they have replaced the map sensor, the manifold pressure sensor. Uh, tried to solve this problem. Uh, they couldn't get it fixed. Uh, oh, sorry, it, it didn't cure the problem. So the car is still having the same problem. And um, so I got the car um, and I've tried the car. So what the car does, I'm going to show you exactly what the car does. So we're going to start the engine. Right guys, so as you can see, there is no funny lights. So the engine light is extinguished and that earlier spanner is off as well. So there's no funny lights, but what the car does is, so I'm going to press the throttle and obviously you can't see that guys, but the car is very uh, slow to respond to the throttle. It's very sluggish if that makes sense. Now when I press the throttle a little bit more, what you're going to see is when it gets to about 3000 RPMs, the car kind of holds its revs and it's not really misfire, but it looks like misfire. So I'm going to show you what it does. What it does is this. I don't know if you could hear the engine as well. Uh, and when it does this, you can't really see at the back, but uh, it, it does a little bit of smoke as well. So it smokes a lot when it does this and uh, it stops there. If I put my foot fully on f to the floor, um, what happens is within about 10 seconds, I would say, the car actually revs up um, to about 5,000 or 4,500. So it revs up as it should. Uh, it makes a lot of smoke. and uh, But then I take the foot off, we'll come back to where it is. And then the next time you do it, it does exactly the same thing again. So it does that. All right, so that is what the car does. That's the problem with the car. Uh, on the road, it does exactly the same thing, gets to about 3000 and it starts to chattering everywhere, all over the place, and you can't drive the car really. So the first thing I've done was scan the car. So I've, I've loaded everything ready, so I'm, I'm here ready. So there's a fault on that issue in there. I'm gonna look to see what it says in there. And that's the code. First of all, the DS708 can't even tell you what that is, which is funny. Uh, but uh, that P0530 is referring is referring to the um, aircon uh, pressure sensor. So does have nothing to do with the actually um, engine running well let's say so so that didn't really help me so at, the, at this point I didn't have a clue where to start because when the car does this uh, it starts to when it gets to the 3000 and it starts to do that kind of misfiring um, when you look on live data on there, obviously all the values are going to go up and down. But the problem is, none of the values actually tells you what is failing because the car does that oscillation and obviously all the values are going to go up and down. But it's very difficult to actually see on live data which one is actually causing that. So, I took the heat and, and, and another heat, I, I took a guess. Uh, and because they have replaced the turbo solenoid, they have replaced the map sensor. 
to the admission system circuit, let's say, uh, you actually only have another two things, which is the throttle body, uh, and and you have the the MAF, the airflow meter. But there's no codes there for the airflow meter, and we, when you look on live data, actually, um, I can actually show you what happens on live data. I'm gonna start the engine again. So live data. So this is the data list that has most of the running values, let's say. And the one I'm actually interested is... What is that? I do apologize, guys. I was on the wrong uh, uh, live data list. Uh, the one we want, I'll show you now. So I was on diagnostics, and uh, the one I want, uh, the one that has the values I want is actually number four. And the values I start to look at, just curiosity, was this here. The calculated airflow and the airflow sensor. And one of the things you, you, you noticed, obviously these values, they should kind of follow each other. And when I start to put my pedal down, which I'm going to do now, as you can see, they kind of go with each other. But when it gets to the 3000, which is doing now, you see, the value doesn't change, stays there. But once again, is that causing the problem? I don't know. I don't know if that is just the reaction of the flow sensor because something is causing this issue or if it's actually the flow sensor that is causing the issue. So like I said, I, I took the guess and I thought I'm going to measure the flow sensor. So I'm going to I'm going to just going to go outside. I'm going to show you how the uh multi the oscilloscope is connected and then we'll come back here. So, as you saw, the, the oscilloscope is connected to the is connected to the actually uh, uh, flow sensor, and the way the sensor works on this uh, car is not through the voltage; is through the frequency. Uh, sorry, guys, is through the frequency through the frequency and basically uh, what happened is the frequency goes higher as you rev the engine up or as the air pass through the sensor uh, the the frequency increases so the amplitude stays the same so it's connected to the B channel a little bit of glare. I hope he's not gonna spoil the video. So what I'm gonna do is let me take the A channel off. Let me take the A channel off and we'll keep only B. It's gonna bring the hub. It's gonna bring B up to the middle. Roughly there. So, when you rev the engine, what you're going to see is you see the wavelength gets shorter, but that's about it. Okay. So I'm going to put in auto. So you can see. I don't know if you could see the length, the length gets smaller, 
The amplitude stays the same, it's just the length, look. I hope you can follow the the engine as it goes, as it revs up, yeah? So, obviously I have um, I have some some uh, values here uh, that I found online um, and um, basically when you look at this this is in Portuguese guys but uh, basically so we have pin 2 and 4 all the values are red on pin 2 and 4 obviously one in ground that has been checked already is 12 volts in there so with the ignition on only we should have 1837 kilohertz uh, sorry Hertz so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna turn the engine off turn the ignition on so there we go you have sorry you have 1.84 so you should have about 1.83 so that that's good to me now then it tells me that idling idling I should get 2318 so let's gonna start the engine it's gonna go look at the top so we should get 2318 and we are actually getting 229 so 2.3 so it's I would say is acceptable. Now, when you get to 3000 RPMs, we should get 3800. Now, I'm gonna rev the engine, I'm gonna rev the engine just before, just to the 3000, uh, because the car starts to fail just after the, the, the 3000. So, I'm gonna rev the engine before it starts to fail to the 3000. Dead on the three dead on the three thousand uh, RPMs mark, and then we're going to look at that value. See if that value in there corresponds to the three thousand and eight hundred. So I'm going to rev the engine slowly, so we get this right. Slow. I'd say it's 3,000. Yeah. Be more. So let's say 3,000, yeah? And you have 3.0. So you have 800 hertz below the actually set point. So, to me, it looks like as the frequency starts to increase with the flow of the air, the relation is wrong. So, the, the flow sensor is actually faulted. It looks okay, idling and um, ignition on, obviously, but then the relation after that it starts to go wrong. And uh, these guys is how I've spotted that the actually flow sensor was faulted. So, like I said, I had the car fixed. I, I bought another another flow sensor. I put it in there, and the car is running fine. Runs just beautiful with it. And uh, trying, I've, I've checked in there as well. And the, the actually um, hertz, they actually go all the way beautifully, all the way, and the car revs just fine. So. This is how I've, uh, how, have, uh, how I have diagnosed a faulty flow sensor. Guys, I, I, I hope you have enjoyed the video. I hope you have learned something, or if, or at least I hope I, I've helped someone. Um, thank you for watching, guys.